Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. And may God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit guide the understanding of all of you and unblock the understanding of those who cannot comprehend the greatness of the simplicity of God. God is simple. Did you know this, dear friends? And He is simple to those who are simple. He is simple, easy to be understood by everyone who is simple, who is humble in spirit. People who are authentic, those who are transparent, who are truly sincere. A person doesn't necessarily have to be holy in order to be heard by God. They only have to be transparent, authentic. They only have to be sincere, honest, at least towards God, so that God, in His infinite wisdom and power and glory and majesty, and simplicity, he may reveal himself to them. I'd like you, dear friends, you who say like this, Bishop, I would like to receive the Holy Spirit so much, but so much, so much. Well, I doubt that you want to receive the Holy Spirit more than God is willing, he wants and desires to give you the Holy Spirit. I doubt, I doubt. God wants much more to dwell inside of you. He wants much more to turn you into his dwelling place and his temple, his altar. Because this is how he is going to be sanctified here on earth. God is sanctified and glorified and magnified there in heaven, but here on earth, he is not always glorified. He is only sanctified, glorified and magnified here on earth in the lives of those who have been serving him as an altar, as a dwelling place, a temple, as the dwelling place of the living God. And then, yes, he is sanctified in that person's life. But, Bishop, if this is the case, I, I can't understand this, this message. Because you said that I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I want. I want with all of my strength. Very well, you want it, very well. And God wants to dwell in me. So what is preventing, what's impeding him from coming to dwell in me? I cannot go to him, he has to come to me. So uh, there's no way for me to get to him, but he can get to me. Can the devil, is the devil preventing God from entering me? No, it's not the devil, it's you. It's you, you yourself, dear friend. You are impeding him from coming. Do you know why? Because God hears everyone's prayers. Everyone who cries out to him with sincerity, with transparency, even though they are sinners. Even though they are sinners. Do you remember that woman who was caught in adultery and everybody wanted to stone her? But Jesus, what did he do? Did he condemn her? No, the law said that she should have been stoned. But Jesus said the following, He who has no sin, let him throw the first stone. So, one by one, started to walk away, the priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, everyone 
left and Jesus was there alone with the woman. And what did he do? Did he rebuke, correct, stone her at all? No. He asked, where are those who are accusing you? And she said, they are all gone, Master. And he said, no one condemned you. She said, no. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Look at the simplicity, the simplicity of the Almighty. Whenever he is dealing with us, with human beings in general, there are miserable worms, zero, nothing, we are nothing. But he deals with human beings with simplicity, with transparency, with purity, with truth, with love, true love. Not this feeling of love, this emotion, no, but it's an intelligent love. It's a practical kind of love, a true love that has nothing to do with this cheap love, this nonsense kind of love that the world displays out there. No, his love is that love that makes the difference in the lives of those who are loved. So he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and see no more. That's all. So look, pay attention. Who prevented Jesus from forgiving her? Did the devil prevent him? No. The devil used people, but Jesus used his love, his true love. And he uses of his love to also give you his spirit because he's interested as well in this. God is interested in dwelling in you. But who impedes that he will come upon you? You do it. I said it. Now you repeat. You are the one impeding it from happening. Do you know why? Because you have been prioritizing something else that is not him. You want, I know that you desire. Oh, how I would like to have him. I know. But what is holding you back? What is impeding you from receiving the Holy Spirit? See, evaluate your life. Evaluate your behavior. Evaluate yourself, dear friend. Be transparent. Be sincere. At least with yourself. Be honest with yourself and with God. Because, okay, you've been deceiving, you've been pretending, you're hiding things. You are pretending to be someone that you are not. But you cannot pretend to God. And this is what is preventing you from receiving the Holy Spirit. Because before others, you are one. But before yourself, you know who you are. We know who we are. Yes or no? Tell me the truth. We know who we are. Don't we? We do. So, what is it that is impeding us from receiving or impeding you from receiving the Holy Spirit? Would it perhaps be a love that is not God? You are in love with someone and you've placed that person on your throne, on the throne of your life. Then this, it's over because... How can you place someone, whoever that person might be, however important they are to you, in the place of Jesus? It's, it doesn't work. If you want the spirit of Jesus, the least you have to surrender your soul, your body, your being. You have to surrender yourself to Him. You have to make a way so that He can come and meet you. You have to prove to him that you truly want him. And God sees that. God knows your heart. God knows our heart. He knows that we are miserable worms. But he still, still, he came into this world to save us. So, what is it that is impeding you from receiving the Holy Spirit? So let go of it. I don't know what it is. I have no idea about what it is. Perhaps your dreams, your own projects, 
your will. You want to prevail over your own will. You want to do your will. You want the Holy Spirit, but you want to keep your will on top. But it doesn't work. Come on. Let's agree on this. It's not possible. It's not possible. Not at all. Don't waste any time, dear friends. Are you going to wait to get old, to grow old, to receive the Holy Spirit? And worst of all is that the more time goes by, the more complicated it becomes because you start having all the priorities. You prioritize things in your life that will hinder your faith. And then comes a point that you get discouraged. Okay, he doesn't come upon me. I've done fasts, I've done, I've done this and that and the other. But you haven't given your best. That's the reality. Tell me the truth. It's like I said yesterday. I was mentioning about the, the documentary that I watched. Very interesting. This guy that wanted to reach the top of the seven highest mountains in the world. It was about a Nepalese man who was born in Nepal. And this man put together the team that he needed in order to help him climb all the seven highest mountains in the world to reach the top of these mountains. And he placed all of his strength, all of his heart. He put all of his intelligence, his physical strength, his ability. He surrendered. He gave up on everything. He let go of his position, of his money, his, his financial conditions, his position. He was a soldier from the British Army and he gave up on everything, everything, everything. He resigned and left. And he said, I would go and do it. So we learned with people like this that when you have a dream, you go after this until you fulfill it. That's the reality. If you have the dream to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to put this in the first place of your life. The first place you have to prioritize it. Everything that comes in order to try and obstruct this dream, you are going to get it out of the way. You eliminate it. And this has to come from you. You have to do it yourself. I can't do it for you. Bishop, pray for me. Okay, I pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. But do you think that I have more rights before God than you do? No, I don't. It's a matter of faith. You have to do your part. I can pray. I can guide, I can teach, I can give you what I have, the best I have. But if you do not prioritize and don't put this goal first in your life, then you won't receive it. This, this man, he reached the top, he climbed the seven highest mountains in the world. He bent over backwards, but he reached his goal. The truth, dear friend, is that when the person really wants something, they make it happen. They do anything for what they want. You are listening to me right now, and, and perhaps you are a young lady, you are still a child, and you fell in love for another young man. You fell in love for someone, and what did you do? You disobeyed your mother, your father, you left your, your family behind, you left school, everything and you went to live with him. Isn't it? Didn't you do it? How many people do that? They do that, why? Because they put that person, that dream, that objective in the very first place. And when a person wants to receive the Holy Spirit, they put him in the first place of their life, before the mother, the father, the family, before work, social position, money, they prioritize him above everything, everything. They prioritize him over their religion, their pastor, their, their bishop, their church, whatever. They prioritize, Lord, it's 
own. Because God, dear friend, is everything, everything, everything that we need in order to be happy. And when we receive Him, when a person has Him, then truly that person is happy. However, in order to have Him, we have to pay the price. And it's not money. Listen to me, a oh, 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 hard-headed one that thinks that we want money. If I wanted money, I wouldn't be here, dear friend. I would be doing something else. I want to lead people to this knowledge, to this condition of receiving the same spirit God has given me. And that makes me an overcomer for His glory, not for my glory. It's for the sanctification of His name through my life. So, if you indeed want, then you, you pay the price. You will sacrifice your desires, your will, your soul, your dreams, your personal dreams, everything. That's what Jesus, or the Spirit of Jesus, spoke to me one specific day there in, in Lapa. I was walking there in, in Rio on my way to work with books under my arms and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, what will be your profit if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Because I was thinking of my plans, my projects, my dreams. And he said to me, what's the profit of you gaining the whole world and lose your soul? You can gain here on earth, but you're going to die. And then, in your soul, where is it going to go? So, dear friend, that was the moment that I used my mind, I reasoned, and I changed my focus from my goals, from my objectives, from my plans, to focus on the will of God. That's what He wants. He wants you to do His will. He wants you to be indeed and in truth a servant of His. And for that to happen, dear friend, you have to obey. You only have to obey. Jesus said to the adulterous woman, Go and see no more. That's it. Neither do I condemn you. Go and see no more. Go and don't be an adulterous anymore. That's how obey. Is it difficult to obey? It is difficult when the person does not want to obey. But when they do, it's not hard. Jesus spoke about a man who had two sons. And he came to one of them and said, Son, go to work in the vineyard today. And then the son said, No, I don't want. I won't go. I don't want to go. He said, Okay. But as time went by, he decided to go to work. But the other one, he said to the other son, Go and work in the vineyard today. And the son said, Yes, Father, I will go. But he never did. So, who obeyed the Father? Who obeyed? The first that perhaps was even spoiled, saying he wasn't going to go and all, but he went. And this is what pleases God. Not for you to, to feel, oh, I feel like receiving the Holy Spirit. No, dear friend, this doesn't work. It's pointless for you to be really willing. You, ha you, you have a strong desire to receive the Holy Spirit. But it's pointless if you have all the will, all the desire and the intention, but you don't do His will. You have to obey Him. You have to do His will. This is the reality, dear friend. Therefore, God is simple. And it's easy, it's simple for you to conquer what He has to give you. But the difficult part is, is you. It's not the devil. The devil will use people and things. The devil will use everything he has. But he cannot impose his will on you. You have to decide to obey or not. And this is a matter of using your mind, of, of decision. Therefore, dear friends, that's how it goes with God. If you want His own, be ready, be willing to put your own on His altar, your life, your soul. I'm not talking about offering or money. I'm not talking about material goods because all of this will be left here. These are, this is rubbish, money. 
all of this will stay here. Money cannot buy peace. The peace that you who don't have the Holy Spirit don't have. You don't have this peace either. Is it true or not? Do you have peace? No. Those who don't have the Holy Spirit, they have no peace. Why? Why don't they have peace? Because they don't have the Spirit of Peace. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Peace. Those who don't have Him don't have peace. They live making mistakes, iniquity, in sin. They have no strength, theoretically. They have no strength to overcome themselves. But those who have the Holy Spirit are overcomers. They overcome everything. They overcome the devil. They overcome the world. They overcome themselves. They overcome everything. And they conquer eternal life with the eternal God and Father. Praise God. You who want to receive the Holy Spirit, do not go to the church thinking of something else, distracted or thinking of something else that is not receiving the Holy Spirit. Go with, with a thirst. I, I want you to drink of this water. I want you to drink of this water, no matter the price. How much is it? I'm ready to pay the price. It, it will cost my will. Okay, then I will, I will pay it. I will let go of my will. I will sacrifice my desires. I will stop being myself, but I will take possession of this promise for those who truly believe. Do not forget, dear friend, you have to prove to God that you truly want the Holy Spirit. If you do not prove to Him, you are not going to receive Him. Did you understand? May God bless all of you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. My apologies, forgive me if by any chance I was too rude with you. But I'm talking like this to, to catch your attention because I don't have here beautiful, soothing words to deceive you here. No, it is what it is. It's yes or no. Whatever is beyond that is of the devil. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.